I'm Dr. Freda, and today I'm giving you the top 10 warning symptoms of a urinary tract infection that you should never ignore. Have you ever experienced a burning while you urinate? Or have you ever felt like you needed to run to the restroom? Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go right now. But when you get there to urinate, you really don't have to? Well, if so, you may have experienced a UTI or a urinary tract infection. And if so, don't worry, you're not alone. UTIs are among the most common infections in the United States, and they are much more common in women than in men. In fact, 60% of women will experience a UTI at some point in her lifetime, but men can get them as well. And it's very important to understand how to recognize a UTI because they can lead potentially to serious complications. So today we're going to talk about it. I'm going to give you the definition of a UTI, the causes, the top 10 symptoms you should never ignore. I'll also talk to you about how to prevent urinary tract infections. And I'll tell you when it's time to go seek professional medical care. Keep watching. Ever felt overlooked or not heard in a doctor's office? Frustrated with waiting rooms and rushed consultations? I'm Dr. Frida and I have the perfect remedy. I'm a medical doctor who has been triple board certified and I believe everyone should have access to world-class healthcare. I want to personally invite you to experience my VIP consultation telehealth services. Click the link below and book your VIP consultation today. I'm Dr. Frida. I'm a board certified kidney and high blood pressure specialist. And so taking care of patients with UTIs is something I do every day in my practice. In order to understand what a urinary tract infection is, you first must know exactly what is the urinary tract. Well, it consists of your kidneys, which are those two bean-shaped organs located in your lower back and your flanks. It also consists of the ureters, which are the tubes that connect the kidneys to the bladder. Of course, the bladder is part of the urinary tract. That's what holds the urine. And actually, most UTIs are in the bladder, cystitis. And then also the urethra is a part of the urinary tract. And the urethra is a tube that leads from the bladder to the outside world. All of this makes up the urinary tract. Now, women do indeed get UTIs more frequently than men, and this is why. When you think about that urethra, that tube that connects the bladder to the outside world, for women, it travels a very short distance, right? But for men, the urethra has to go from the bladder all the way through the male organ to get to the outside world. And so when we think about bacteria, which cause UTIs most often, in order for them to get from the outside world into the bladder, for men, they have to climb all the way up through the urethra, the length of the male organ, before they get to the bladder. For women, however, there's not that much of a distance. So indeed, women do get UTIs more often than men. So by definition, a UTI occurs when there is an infection anywhere in that urinary tract that I just described. Most frequently, the UTI is caused by a bacterium, okay? Some bacteria like E. coli, Klebsiella, that climb up through the urethra and they most often land in the bladder. And so a bladder infection is also called cystitis. But the infection can sometimes ascend, it can go higher, and it can be in those ureters, and it can even get into the kidneys. And when you have a UTI that's in the kidneys, it's called pyelonephritis, and that's actually an even more serious infection. You can also get fungal infections like yeast, especially in patients who are immunocompromised. So now let's talk about the causes and the risk factors for UTIs. Again, they are most commonly caused by bacteria. They can be caused by a fungus or by yeast. And the risk factors are very important to understand in order to know how to prevent UTIs. Sex. Yes, sexual intercourse is a risk factor for UTIs. And no, a UTI is not an STI or a sexually transmitted infection, but having sex does increase your risk for the infection. That's why for young ladies who get bladder infections, it's commonly called honeymoon cystitis. Another risk factor for UTIs is something going awry in the urinary tract infection as far as the anatomy. For example, if you have a kidney stone, this could cause a backup of urine or slowing up of the urine flow, and that could lead to a UTI. Please be sure to watch my video on the painful truth about kidney stones after you finish watching this video. Also, 
men, if you're a man with an enlarged prostate or BPH, this can cause a backup of the urine flow, which can lead to a UTI. And men, uh, spoiler alert, any man who lives long enough, especially once you get past the age of 40, eventually you will get a big prostate. Question, have you ever experienced a urinary tract infection? If so, what were some of your first signs and symptoms to let you know that you might have something going on? Please share below. When you share your experiences, this helps others to feel less alone and it makes them more informed. Other risk factors for UTIs, if you are a patient with diabetes, you could be at a higher risk for having a UTI. Also, if you are immunocompromised, that's a risk factor for UTIs. So certainly patients on chemotherapy, your immune systems are being suppressed or pushed down, so you could be at risk. And patients who have had transplants, you take medications to suppress your immune system to protect the transplant, but this could put you at risk for UTIs. Do you know who else is at risk? Perimenopausal women or women who are going through menopause. These hormonal changes can put you at risk. And pregnant women. Again, pregnant women have hormonal changes that can put them at risk for UTIs. Also, just the physicality of the baby in the uterus, the baby in the womb. Sometimes that baby can kind of sit right there on the bladder and prevent you from being able to fully empty your bladder. And this could lead to UTIs or urinary tract infections. Also, certain birth control can put you at risk for UTIs, specifically spermicides, like spermicides that might be on condoms. What they do is they can kill off some of the normal flora, some of the normal bacteria, and that can allow other bacteria to grow and cause a problem. Oh, and if you've ever been in a hospital and you needed to have a Foley catheter or a tube that's actually placed in your urethra so you can urinate without having to get out of the hospital bed, well, having these Foley catheters, these foreign bodies in your bladder can put you at risk for UTIs as well. Bottom line, when it comes to the cause of a UTI, it is the bacterium or even a fungus that is climbing up the urethra and finding its way into the bladder, maybe going up to the ureter and Lord forbid, possibly getting to the kidneys. Would you like to have a conversation with me about your personal symptoms? Well, the good news is that now you can do it. I have a concierge medical service now where I can talk to you one-on-one -on -one about your own history, your own questions, and I will give you that undivided time in my one-on-one -on -one personal attention. We can do it by telehealth, so you don't even have to be in my same city. Please click the link in my bio to find out how to talk to me and to have a personal concierge conversation. And now for the top 10 warning symptoms you should really watch out for when it comes to urinary tract infections. Number one, pain when you urinate. This is called dysuria or a sense of burning when the urine flows out. Number two, cloudy urine. Normal urine should be clear in a very, very, very light, faint yellow, okay? When you have a nice, well-hydrated urine. If that urine is looking cloudy, there's a great chance that you have bacteria in there and this could be a UTI. Number three, foul smelling urine. You know how your urine smells normally. If you're getting a strong, pungent, or just bad odor in your urine, yeah, that could be a symptom of a UTI. Number four, frequency. This is when you're getting up to urinate way more frequently than you normally do. Or if you're getting up at night or having nocturia, this could definitely be a sign. Also, in men, this could be a, a symptom of having a large prostate if you're getting up at night to use the restroom quite a bit. Either way, you want to get checked out and make sure it's not an infection. Number five, urgency. This is when you are running to the restroom. Got to go, got to go, got to go right now. But you get there and you really don't have to urinate. Not much urine is coming out. This is called urgency. Number six, pressure or cramping in the lower abdomen, specifically in the lower abdomen in the front where the bladder is. Yes, this can be quite an annoying symptom. A lot of my, my ladies will get this symptom and they're not sure if maybe their period is coming on or if it's, you know, some type of a something going on with the uterus. But quite frankly, the bladder sits right in front of the uterus. So sometimes these pains can be confused. But if you're getting a lower abdominal, kind of a crampy pain, or sometimes a sense of fullness, this could be a symptom of a UTI. Of these common UTI symptoms that I've listed thus far, which ones have you or a loved one experienced? Please comment down below. Now, for these next group of warning symptoms, these are a little more serious. And if you're having these, 
you may need to actually go to the doctor, okay, to get checked out because these could be indicative of a pyelonephritis or a UTI that has ascended, has gone up into the kidneys. And this could actually be very serious and even life-threatening. Number seven, fever. And by definition, a fever is when your temperature is 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. If you've been having some UTI symptoms and then now you're having a fever, this could be a warning that your body is having an overwhelming infection or a sepsis, which if left unchecked, could potentially lead to septic shock, a potentially fatal condition. Number eight, back pain. If you're having lower back pain or flank pain, this could definitely be a symptom of a UTI and it could be indicative of pyelonephritis, that infection of the kidneys, which is often more serious. Number nine, vomiting. Yes, nausea and vomiting can be symptoms of a UTI. You may think of these as only GI or gastrointestinal symptoms, you know, involving the esophagus or the stomach or the intestines, but no, a UTI, especially if that infection gets overwhelming or if you have a kidney infection, can cause you to have nausea and vomiting. Number 10, blood in your urine or hematuria. If you suspect that you have a UTI and you see blood in your urine, this could be a very serious sign and you definitely want to contact your physician or healthcare provider. Now, there are other things other than UTIs that can cause blood in the urine, such as kidney cancer, bladder cancer, or if you have an inflammation of the kidneys, like a glomerulonephritis, that can do it. Either way, having blood in your urine is not normal and you definitely want to seek medical help at this time. So now let's talk prevention. We don't have to be all gloom and doom. There are some strategies for preventing UTIs. One, hydration. You want to make sure that your body is adequately hydrated, that you drink enough water, because having a nice urine flow will help to prevent you from getting UTIs. It'll help keep the urine from being stagnant, just sitting there waiting for bacteria to multiply. Instead, when you're drinking a lot of water, that allows the fluid to move, the urine to flow, and it allows that any of those bacteria that sneak up there to be flushed out goodbye in the urine. Be sure to watch my video on the seven huge benefits of drinking water after you finish watching this video. Also, having a healthy diet that is low in processed foods, low in sugary foods, you want to avoid added sugar, and this can help, especially if you're a diabetic. Diabetics are at a higher risk for UTIs. And so, yeah, avoiding added sugar can help to prevent UTIs. Practicing good hygiene is important. Now, yes, everyone has a natural flora or some bacteria that is normal to have in the urinary tract area. However, however, we don't need any extra bacteria. So make sure that you bathe frequently and that you keep yourself clean. And ladies, when you're wiping after you urinate, make sure you wipe from front to back. If you mess around and wipe from back to front, you're inviting all the bacteria from the backside into your urethra and your urinary tract. No bueno, that's bad news. And teach young girls, okay, when they're old enough to urinate, they're old enough to learn to wipe from front to back because yes, children can get UTIs too. Oh, and ladies, another way to prevent UTIs, remember when we talked about the honeymoon cystitis the bladder infection or UTIs that women get after sex because women have short little urethras. Well, after you have sex, please don't just sit there and be in your afterglow. Mm -mm. As soon as you're finished having sex, get up and go and urinate. Here's how it helps. If you get up and urinate, instead of the bacteria just sitting there and being able to crawl up your short little urethra ladies and get into your bladder, if you get up and urinate, then you flush out those bacteria that are trying to crawl up and you prevent the UTI. So now let's talk about when you need to seek medical help, okay? When do you need to call your physician? Well, if you're having any of these UTI symptoms, you need to go ahead and contact your physician. And what will be done is they can do a urinalysis with micro, okay? And they can do a urine culture where they see which bugs are growing in the urine, okay? They'll see which bacteria are there. And they can also find out which antibiotics will work for your specific type of a UTI. Usually, the treatment is about three days of oral antibiotics for women when it's an uncomplicated UTI and maybe up to seven days for men. It can be longer depending on your medical complications or your personal risk factors. If you have some of the more serious symptoms that I mentioned, like fever or back pain or vomiting or blood in the urine, well, this means that the urgency is heightened. 
And yes, you want to try to contact your physician, but if you can't, you may need to go to the emergency room because these symptoms can mean that you have pyelonephritis, okay, the infection of the kidneys, and it could mean that you have that sepsis or an overwhelming infection. And this could lead to a complication called septic shock, which could be potentially fatal, okay? So the fever, the vomiting, the blood in the urine, the back pain, you definitely want to seek medical help urgently. And as far as the treatments, usually doctors are able to treat the UTIs with by mouth antibiotics. But once you get to that point of having sepsis or overwhelming infection, then very likely you will need IV antibiotics. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, please be sure to like it and to share it with the people you care about. As always, I appreciate you for watching. I appreciate the support and I want you to do your best to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm Dr. Frida.